So, as a much requested tutorial topic, and I mean hundreds of comments requesting this, no exaggeration, I'll be showing you guys how to draw fur patterns. The second highest requested was facial expressions, which I do plan to cover in the future since I got such an overwhelmingly positive response to my cat drawing tutorial, which thank you guys for 50k views on that one. If you haven't seen the original video, I recommend checking it out as it covers the fundamental basics of how I draw cat anatomy. It's kind of like one of those really bad how to draw books, except I walk you through the steps and give you plenty more examples. Anyhow, back to fur patterns. There are so many ways to approach this, even to the point where it can become overwhelming. So for simplicity's sake, I'm breaking this down into two main categories, flat patterns and gradient patterns, as they are my most commonly used ones. I'll be showing you how to turn this image into this and this. And I will say that there's no right or wrong way to make fur. Everyone's gonna do this completely differently. These are just the techniques and skills that I've picked up on in the 10 plus years of drawing cats. Reminder, my fur pattern started out looking like this. So everyone starts somewhere. Category one, flat patterns. Flat colors can range from very simple shapes to more sketchy, line heavy patterns. These can go from very simple and cartoony all the way up to incredibly detailed and complex. It's up to you to find that sweet spot that you're the most comfortable at. If you're a beginner, I recommend trying simple patterns first to get the hang of it. Just try and block out simple shapes. Different types of fur patterns will also be much more difficult to mimic. For example, my cat Moth is a tortoise shell and her pattern will most likely not translate well as it is. It would need a lot of simplifying. But in opposition, my other cat, Helac, is a bicolor, meaning she's just two simple colors, gray and white. In this specific example for flat colors, we'll be referencing my third kitty, Bean, as she's a tabby. I begin by isolating her primary color, and then her stripe color, and then underbelly color. Once I have a small palette going, I make her base color her primary color. In this case, it's a lighter creamy brown. The brushes I use for flat colors are also usually bold and solid and round. I know each art program varies in the types of brushes, but for this one I typically just use the default round brush. But feel free to play around with it in your own program and find the ones that you like. Okay, so you don't have to do this, but once I fill in her base color, I create a new layer on top. This is where I put any overlapping pattern. Using separate layers makes it much easier to go back in and make changes later if I don't like something. I'll use this new layer on top to fill in her tabby stripes. Then lastly, on another new layer, I'll use her underbelly color to add on her whites. In cats, white usually sits on the top of the fur, which is why white paws are often referred to as socks or mittens. And all that's left is her eye color, and here's Beanie. Just to show you how the layers are broken down, I'll make them highlighted and numbered for you. To summarize, my base color comes first, which in Bean's case was this lighter creamy brown. And then on top of that in another layer is her darker brown stripes. And lastly comes the whites. Now that you have the basics of the patterning down, we can move on to something a little bit more complex. Category two, gradient patterns. Working off the same example of Princess Tia Beanie, the beaniest baby in all the land, I'll show you how I turn my flat colored pattern from this into this. Gradient patterns vary greatly from flat patterns and are slightly more difficult. They require just a little bit more skill in painting and analyzing and observing. However, they still kind of use the same technique of isolating colors and using separate layers. Just like how we started on the previous example, isolate your base color, marking color, and underbelly color, and then use the base color to start. However, this is where it begins to vary. We won't just have one flat color to put the markings on top of this time. Oftentimes, I'll make the brace into a gradient of sorts. In Bean's case, her shoulders, back, ears, top of head, side of face, and tail tip are much darker in color compared to her chest, body, and legs. I'll pick a darker shade of her base color to work with and fill that in. You can do this either using a lower opacity airbrush or by blocking in the colors and then using a smudge tool or watercolor tool to blend them out. I actually usually use a combination of both. You can also add lighter colors to the base layer if there are any. And now with a new layer, I'll begin adding her tabby stripes again. But this time I'm more careful in my placements and I take notice of where her stripes start to get thicker, thinner, where they fade out, where they're more bold, etc. And for painting the tabby stripes, I'll use a much more painterly lower opacity brush versus the solid round brush that I used for the flat colors. When painting these stripes, I sort of keep in mind the direction of fur. We're gonna go on just a little bit of a tangent here. Cats as well as most animals have a specific way that fur grows in known as their fur direction. 
For example, looking at this up-close picture of Moth, we can see that the fur on her forehead goes straight up, whereas the fur on her cheeks go outwards towards the side. The fur on her chest, however, goes downwards. This is something that happens all over a cat's body, so when painting on markings, you should keep in mind the direction of fur, as it helps the visuals flow much better. Stripes and even solid blocks of colors on cat's coat will always follow this pattern. If all of the fur were to be going, let's say, in a single direction, then your character will end up looking incredibly flat and two-dimensional. This is something that personally took me a while to understand, and it required me to make several realism portraits of animals before I had any kind of solid grasp on it. Okay, so tangent over and back to painting the stripes. Instead of overloading my brain and trying to get each little bit of color accurate, I use one unified darker color, and after I'm done painting on her stripes, I'll go in and use a lower opacity airbrush with a similar color to her base color, and then brush out the faded parts of her stripes, like the ones closer to her paws. A lot of times tabbies will fade out closer to their bellies, paws, center of face, and other areas. Or you could take a lower opacity eraser and also fade them out. It has the same effect. And lastly, on yet another layer, I'll go in and add her underbelly colors and any whites she has on her. These will be more sketchy and flowy rather than stiff and solid. After you're done with this, you can go in and play with the opacity until you get your pattern looking just the way you'd like. And a lot of it is honestly trial and error, and often even I will have to go back in and totally redo someone's coat pattern. And here's Beanie. Hopefully this tutorial helped. It really can just be trial and error, and it can take quite a bit of time to figure out, but most importantly, have fun with it and don't get stressed out. Both of these methods can be used on pretty much any type of fur pattern. I'd also do a bit of research into fur pattern genetics if you're trying to get them at least semi-realistic. Hopefully this was helpful, and if you guys want even further explanations or tutorials on fur patterns, let me know and I'll make a whole video covering other types of patterns such as calicos, torties, bicolors, color points, and more. And if there's any other drawing tips you'd like, feel free to leave a comment. I may not respond to most of them, but I do try to read as many as I can and I will take them into consideration for future tutorials.